what is up everybody reefer man reviews here and i've got a special video that i'm going to do for y'all today if i could see because <sighs> What's up? Welcome to my channel. I am Ray for Man Reviews, and uh, yeah, click like, click subscribe, and notifications, and um, light them up and listen to this story. It comes from the Aftermath novel from Chuck Wendig, Star Wars novel. Uh, this was set about, what was it, five years or so, I think. Uh, yeah. Gosh darn. I smoke went my eye. Ooh. Ooh. All right, so I am going to be reading the interlude on Tatooine. It takes place on two, page 297 of the hardcover edition. Um, or if you have the paperback edition, this is the uh, interlude that comes between chapters 31 and 32, towards the end of the book. I do believe it's the first appearance of him. Um, him being, of course, Cobb Vant, as we've all seen recently on The Mandalorian. Uh, this was his introduction to the Star Wars world. Um, not that appearance on the show, which was awesomely played by Timothy Oliphant. So, I'm going to fire up the audio recorder and read this because I'm not going to make you sit and watch me read it. What I'll probably do is throw up some images so that, you know, whatever. Uh, maybe some fan art or something. I, I don't know. You'll know by the time you start hearing me tell this story. So if you like this and you want me to go through the rest of his appearances in the other two novels, Life Debt and Empire's End, let me know down below. I'll probably just do it anyway. But let me know. It's good to know if I if 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 it's what what y'all want. But uh, yeah, this is the story of how he gets Fett's armor, uh, as told in this book. Now, in the episode, uh, spoiler warning. Um, uh, they tell a slightly different story. And I'm not going to go into it right now. Um, but I am going to get into this as soon as I relight this and finish it. It's actually a lot bigger than it looks. With that being said, like I said, make sure you click subscribe and like and notification bells. Hope you enjoy this. The following is from an interlude in Chuck Wendig's Star Wars Aftermath. Tatooine. Jawas stink. That's something Admiral Cheru didn't expect. Most of this planet has that hot sand scent to it, like the inside of his mother's clay oven before she put dough into it. Like everything's baking, but soon as he stepped inside this sand crawler, the odor hit him like a fist. A musky animal smell, and suddenly he's forced to wonder if each Jawa is just a fraternity of wet rats gathering together under brown robes and a black face veil. They hiss and jabber at him, and he tells them again like he's been telling them for the last half hour. I don't want any of this. This, he sweeps his arms in a broad gesture, indicating the dimly lit hip heaps of junk all around him, is all worthless to me and my company. I need to see the real goods. He enunciates each word like he's speaking to someone hard of hearing. As if it's doing any good at all, these stubborn little stink monsters don't seem to hear him or understand him, or maybe they just don't care. But he knows the stories. They sell the dross to the robes, rubes, but every sand 
Every sand crawler has a real collection, too. Valuable goods to those in the know. Adwin has a job here. It's not to come back to his boss with an armload of malfunctioning garbage. The job was click and whisper. I need droids, weapons, mining tools. I know these sand crawlers are old mining vehicles. You stole them. The least you could do is... From behind him, someone clears his throat. <clears> throat> Adwin glances back, sees a man standing there. Angular fellow, leathery skin, pinched eyes, amused smile. Ahoy there, the man says. Uh Uh-huh, Adwin answers. Fine. If you'll excuse me? Irritated, he adds. I hope to be done here soon, provided these things comply. You're not from around here, are you? The man says, still grinning like he knows something. He steps in out of the bright desert sun, brushes some dust off his long jacket. Not a local. No? How did you know? The man chuckles, a roomy, growly laugh. You're too clean, for starters. Some Spend some time here, you get all get dust all up in your fingernails and nose hairs. Send sand in your boots. But the other thing is, you gotta know how to handle the jowls. These little scavengers, they work on rapport. You buy something now, something small, then you come back, and then you buy bigger. And eventually, after a dozen or so visits, you start to see what they really have to offer. The real deal. Adwin scowls. He doesn't have the patience for this. I don't have the luxury of time. My boss won't allow it, he sighs. This is worthless, then. I suppose I'll have to take my chances in. What's that town behind us? Boss Pelgo, the man says. Well, yes, there or Espa, I suppose, Adwin sighs. He begins to push past the man. The man extends the flat of his hand. He doesn't touch Adwin, but does block his way out. Now, hold on, friend. I happen to have the rapport you need with these little fellas. I'd be happy to vouch for you. Adwin narrows his eyes. You would? Sure thing. Why would you do that? He squints hard at suspicion, twisting his face into an uncertain sneer. What's the price? The man laughs again. No price. No price. Just hospitality. This planet, back-end water-farming bumpkins, fine. Adwin can use that. He's comfortable exploiting the naivety of others. Yes, yes, that would be excellent. Thank you, uh, your name? Cobb Vanth. Mr. Vanth, Cobb, please. Ah, uh, Cobb, then, shall we, then? The man steps forward, scratching at his stubble face. He starts talking to the Jawas. They gabble at him in their rat tongue, and he says, "Uh Uh-uh, no, I know, but I come bearing credits, and so does he. Cobb turns to Adwin and gives a wink. The Jawas whisper and babble. Okay, then. Come on, Cobb says, and they follow a pair of the little hooded weirdos to another door in the back next to an upside-down gonktroid. The The door hisses open, then shuts again behind them. Lights click on, brighter here than in the other room, and sure enough, these are the goods. A protocol droid, a pair of astromechs, a rack of weapons, imperial issue by the looks of it. Against the far wall, a series of panels from what looks like a hut sail barge, plus a few other hutties artifacts, some charred, others twisted, all of it wreckage. Perfect, 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 Adwin says, clapping his hands. He immediately heads over to a shelf and starts looking through bins, boxes, wire crates. Cobb pokes around too, though Adwin mostly loses track of him till Cobb says, You're with that new mining company. Adwin turns, hmm? Uh, yes, the Red Key Company, isn't it? That's the one. How'd you know? I have a way of sussing things out. I know that things are changing, not just in the galaxy, but here at home too. The huts still haven't shaken out who's next up to fill Jabba's throne. If you can call that flat slab of his a throne, seems like this might be a new day for Tatooine. Yes, we certainly hope so, Adwin idly responds, mostly ignoring the man's small talk prattle. He's happy Cobb got him in here, but now wishes the man would just leave him alone. Adwin spies a large, long box on the floor. He whips off the ratty cloth that's covering it, and... Oh my. From the box, he withdraws a helmet. 
pitted and popped as if with some kind of acid. But still, he wraps his knuckles on it. The Mandalorians knew how to make armor, didn't they? Look at this, he says, holding it up. Mandalorian battle armor, whole box, complete set by the looks of it. Been through hell and back. I think my boss will appreciate this. I actually think I might take that home with me, Cobb says. I think not, Adwin says, turning around. The helmet tucked under his arm. The blaster at his hip suddenly feels heavy, pendulous, eager to be drawn. A strange sensation, that. Adwin feels like he's been... Like he's really getting into the spirit of this planet. He's never had to shoot a man before. Maybe that day is today? An exhilarating feeling, oddly. Cobb grins, crosses his arms. What are you thinking, company man? See, I could really use that armor. I figure being a newly appointed lawman... Self-appointed, I think, Adwin says. But Cobb doesn't take the bait. Being a lawman, I could use some protection against those corrupt types who might think to seize the opportunity here on my planet. That armor is mine. Adwin smirks. He takes his thumb and pulls back his tunic, revealing the blaster. Cobb. Sheriff Vance to you. Oh, Adwin laughs. Sheriff, I'd hate to have to draw this blaster. Cobb Vance's hand is up in a flash. There's the shriek from his own blaster and it punches a cauterized hole clean through Adwin's shoulder on his right side. His hand goes limp, lifeless. The helmet clatters out of his other hand. He backs against the shelf, terror struck. You, you monster! Cobb shrugs. Oh, now, I'm no monster. No worse than your boss. That wee quay dung muncher, the Lorgan Marvellan. I don't know his scam. I know all the scams. Afraid the Republic is back and gonna put their boot down on all the low lives and scum lickers. The syndicates are trying to find new ways to appear legit. And with the huts fighting one another for control, a bunch of these little quote unquote mining companies are swooping in with brutes like your boss at the helm. A new age of mining barons. Won't fly. I'm here now. Me and others like me. Bringing the law to this lawless place. And that starts with me shooting you and taking that armor out from under you. Adwin whimpers. Please don't kill me. Oh, I'm not. I'm leaving you alive, so you can go tell your boss that he'd best pack up and hit the hyperspace lead. Hyperspace lanes out of this sector, lest he wants me coming for him in my new, well, new to me, suit of armor. I will, Adwin says, sinking to the floor. He watches Cobb pick up the box of armor before heading to the door. On his way out, Cobb says, Next time, you want to pretend to be a gunfighter? Best to shoot first, talk later. Bye now. And that is the end of the interlude. So as you can see from the, the first part of, of his origin story, uh, Cobb Vance's origin, <coughs> as told in Star Wars Aftermath, Chuck Wendig is the author. <coughs> if you watch the Mandalorian show, the season premiere for season two, chapter nine. Um, it was simplified, or at least the story that was told was simplified. But I'm thinking maybe, maybe that the story we got in the Mandalorian was just, you know, from a certain point of view. Um, the story being told within these novels is just another point of view. Anyway, this is part one of this series of books as I explore the origins of Cobb Vant, as told in the Aftermath series by Chuck Wendig. Awesome series. It also tells the origin story of uh, Snap Wexley, who was uh, a minor role in the uh, sequel trilogies. But this, this is when he's a lot younger. He's a young boy in this. And uh, he, he's got a droid that he's kind of best friends with and... Uh, and it's just, it's a whole thing. The droid's name is Bones. It's great. Uh, go check it out. If you haven't, click like, click subscribe, click the notifications. And, um, 